All right, so we're recording and we're sharing. So everyone, everyone uh, can hear me well. Uh, everyone can just um, see the, the slides. Okay, we're good. So uh, let's just um, start. Uh, my and uh, my preparation for uh, for the holidays. I always have to remind myself that planning is the key. Uh, by getting the meals ready, whichever way you prefer to spend the holiday, whether you're going away or you're going to visit someone or you're going to um, to someone's house or eating out, uh, planning is the key. Uh, so wh while we're talking about our preparation, uh, if, if you have a chronic digestive problem, you know how important it is to... Um, to first cool down the inflammation, and then it's so much easier to be prepared. So I talk about the 10 weeks of um, he gut healing, and if this is not the time, you know, when else are you? January 1st, when, when everybody says I'm gonna start, um, and, and a few days later, you know that you are definitely not going to uh, stick with that. So I always say, start in November. Uh, this way you'll feel so much better already by January 1st. So just congratulations uh, because you're here, because you do want to learn, because you do want to understand what it takes to heal your gut, because you know what it takes to, uh, to, to feel well in general and, and how much effort sometimes it takes and for and and for some if you're still feeling the constipation diarrhea and digestion um irritable bowel crohn's colitis abdominal pain fatigue that's associated with a lot of digestive problems uh and you've been through blogs and groups and you're still not feeling better and just so tired of trying different things and tr just super tired of not getting the results um, I know, I know this well, I have been there. So, um, and I thought that, you know, I just have to try harder uh, instead of just uh, the, the, my, my solution was to learn another method. And uh, the, the harsh reality is that trying harder is not going to lead to healing. And uh, only cl my clients that have a proven plan and, and, and stick with the plan and that, that's the clients that get results. And that uh, those are the ones that will say, I've taken responsibility for my health and I'm going to heal and, and have that great intention uh, of, of healing. It, it just like, this is it. Today is the day and uh, I'm going to start. I'm ready. Uh, a little bit about me for those that still don't know. I'm a doctor of pharmacy, gut healing expert, functional medicine practitioner. My name is Ina. Uh, I'm an author of best-selling Crohn's and Colitis Fix book. And I'm also a creator of a 10-week plan for gut healing that is pretty effective. And I have a lot of clients to, to testify. <laughs> so yes, just, just again to remind you that it, it is not easy. Um, it, it's really hard sometimes to stick to dietary change, to stick to the lifestyle changes that we talk about in, uh, in my program, uh, going through even testing. I've had clients that, uh, that were um, uh, just complaining that functional diagnostics were, was hard enough to, to do. Like for some, it was difficult to express saliva for the adrenal test. Uh, saliva testing can show us how, what your rhythm is, what your uh, cortisol output and where you are as far as the fatigue and uh, the, even that to like they, they, their mouth was dry they couldn't do the test and for others it just uh, it's uh, it was too complicated to read the instructions it had to be a certain part of the day so n nothing that <laughs> that uh, I'm going to recommend is going to be a picnic if I walk in the park it's it's gonna get a little tough, but you know what? If with all the all the results you get from the program, uh, it it makes a world of a difference. So the the difficulties and 
um, the fears and the doubts, all that kind of fades away. And you, you just, um, you, you want to teach your family afterwards. You want to go ahead and simply uh, share with others that you went through this and you want others to feel better too. Um, a little bit about me, originally how this happened was um, I, had, I, have a, I had a stressful job, was originally diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. Uh, it was a very stressful birth of my second kid where they diagnosed me already with Crohn's. Um, medications, heavy duty, a small dose of chemotherapy, a 6MP, and the medications didn't work as well as I was hoping. Uh, and, um, and they made me feel exhausted. So that was the worst part as far as um, the medications. It wasn't even the fact that me as a pharmacist, I, ha I understand every single uh, side effect, every mechanism and uh, what it would do to my body. It, it's harder, believe it or not, it's harder to, to take medications when you understand every uh, little, you know, aspect of it. So um, yeah, it didn't get me to, to the results that I was hoping for. Uh, and, uh, and I was so exhausted, I, I couldn't take care of my kids. And that was a really big concern. I, I was thinking, how am I gonna continue living this way? I've tried uh, tons of different ways and methods. And I uh, went to see John God in Brazil. I tried acupressure, acupuncture, dietary changes and lifestyle changes. A lot of things I've tried. Uh, did get me better, uh, a little better, slowly but surely. Uh, I and, and I um, and I felt the difference already, but it wasn't until uh, finding functional medicine when I finally found my perfect um, solution for every problem problem that I was already. Um, uh, left over with after all these other changes that I've, I've done. So uh, is, it, is it time for you to heal? Think about it. So, sometimes um, I get uh, people to realize where they are with, they, their, with their digestion uh, only when we talk about a lot of different aspects of their life. Many people don't understand they have constipation. Okay, I, I go twice a week. Uh, doctor says it's okay. Some so like the online I read, it's a, it's it's fine. It's absolutely not. You need to detoxify. You need to pull the toxins out of your system. You need to get rid of them. And and when you uh, don't go to the bathroom enough, ideally it should be about two to three times a day, but at least once a day. Uh, and if you don't go enough, it, it's really, uh, you're harboring, you, you're collecting all these toxins that now will get reabsorbed back into the bloodstream. They will get reabsorbed into the system. You will have other symptoms now, not just digestive, because the, all these toxins can go uh, into the skin because they need a way, they need to find a way to somehow get out. <laughs> And some people won't have the system the symptoms except the fatigue or just getting sicker and sicker every time. But many will still have uh, a lot of symptoms of, of um, skin, losing hair, uh, some other of continuing digestive symptoms, and uh, and more like bad, bad breath and. Um, candida associated with which is uh in women it's um yeast infections in in men even even a simple symptom like a toenail fungus we could trace back to initially serious dysbiosis in a gut could be stress related or it could be dysbiosis in the gut of uh, of some kind of so, sort of pathogen that originally, like uh, an H. pylori or a parasite that originated, was never properly healed, no, no one found out, and it, 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 it 
created a, over the years a serious silent chronic inflammation overgrowth of bacteria and then eventually it could end up as a toe nail fungus and you would never think that it all originated from the gut it's very important to realize that so i, I just wanted to highlight a couple of years of not couple i'm already in functional medicine business since 2009 I've been in practice for a while, have uh, testimonials from many clients. My, uh, most of my clients are digestive disease clients, but they, they all, I also take care of uh, natural hormone balancing and, and clients with severe fatigue. Uh, occasionally, I will, I will take a case that's not exactly digestive uh, disorder-based or hormone disorder-based, but it, the, the, if I can trace it somehow back to the root cause, because in functional medicine, we'll look for the root cause. It's, it's not really exactly about the diagnosis. And I believe the future of the medicine will only be about the root cause of the issue. Diagnosis is important because we, we create treatment protocols. It's, it's really important in traditional medicine and no discounting that whatsoever very important evidence-based articles uh, but there's there's such a big room in understanding the root cause of the problem and how we could get rid of it and this way the diagnosis may not even be there later um, so just uh, bringing up a, a classic client named Julie not a real name, obviously. Uh, Thirty-six year old, chronic digestive problems. Realized that uh, her symptoms were causing uh, her to become a person she didn't recognize, and it wasn't just the gut symptoms for her. Uh, she was it was affecting her brain because yes, there's tons now of information of gut and brain um, associations. It's brain brain barrier and how the, all the neurotransmitters that's supposed to be made in our system, 95% of, uh, for example, of serotonin is made in the gut. Uh, that's the, the hormone of like uh, as being antidepressed. Uh, so it, it's, it's a lot that, that has to do with the gut. So again, I'd like to trace it all to, to our digestion. And uh, her sex life was affected. Her, um, she was embarrassed about the disease and of, of, of IBD, inflammatory bowel diseases. It's, it's an embarrassment for some people. No, no, not too many like to share about their bathroom situation. The fact that they need to go to the bathroom ten times a day um, and and get a card from the doctor that they need to use a restroom. It, it's not the most fun um uh, fact to to tell your friends to tell your neighbor to take to tell people definitely um embarrassment for some for for many uh and and your and, and her sex life was affected her happiness she was no longer happy at all uh she her kids were affected and uh, she felt depressed the next step, of course, the doctors wrote her medications for antidepressants, and she didn't feel that she wanted to start. Um, she now is at full remission. Um, she is uh, off many medications. She is a different person going through just the 10 weeks. She did continue with me later, but uh, just to, uh, to reset the gut and fix uh, the make that balance of, of the gut flora was enough to make a big difference in her energy, in, in her mood, in her overall being. Uh, so what you want to learn today, a few things. I know we're mostly uh, going to talk about the, towards the end about the tips for holiday prep, and that's what I want to stress out. It's very important to do now. But I also want to talk about options to heal, how to decrease the inflammation. I want to talk about uh, diagnostics, like functional diagnostics that can be useful, and the functional nutrition for chronic digestive problems. 
uh, nutraceuticals that can be used and uh, immune system support during the season very necessary uh, as we as the temperatures get colder uh, why is everyone getting sicker um, what what is the reason again the digestive system is affected it, it's been um, a stressed and therefore there's a change in the microbiome and therefore the immunity is different and again no no one thought about this for decades when we discussed digestive health and when we discussed immunity it was two separate um, institutions <laughs> and and we realized that we will really have to talk about both of them at the same time uh, the hormones will react they're also affected for in the there are different mechanisms for that we're not even going to so that that's like a couple of hours of discussion of how hormones are affected adrenally thyroid reactivity and and reactivity from the changes in the microbiome but it, it also gets really affected and uh, stress reduction methods i do want to mention and that's always a part of any healing program i believe that has to be there is no other way to truly heal until you realize you have to incorporate that into your uh, program. And tips for holiday prep, of course. So just ab about options to heal. What do you know about those? Yes, there is a traditional route. <sighs> we all know that it's, it's the number one at this point for everyone and I uh, again don't discount any any of it I recently just got my doctorate degree in traditional pharmacy just to broaden my knowledge in uh, and, and renew uh, my knowledge of uh, aspects of pharmaceuticals but nutraceuticals have an enormous amount of room in in that in that field and the, we, we are going to learn more and more and I believe that there will be more uh, each year that we explore and, and study and integrate into our practices. Um, into integrative route is important and may, many more doctors are now opening up. I am super happy about that. When I originally started in 2009, uh, many gastroenterologists were so against uh, what I was saying and um, and probiotics was uh, not even a, you know an option when I was talking to my gastroenterologist he was just like it doesn't work of course it does my paper and doctorate paper was on uh, probiotics for Crohn's and colitis and there's so many now really it's like you, you should go on pubmed.gov and and see how many um, uh, articles how many papers you're going to find on probiotics and healing in general and digestive disorders and IBDs. So other methods that I, I truly believe there's a lot of um, need for those and, and if you combine them in a nice good uh, combination whichever works better for you but the more you combine the more you're going to get out of it acupressure, acupuncture, aromatherapy, Ayurvedic medicine, biofeedback, balnotherapy, chiropractors, homeopathy, naturopathic doctors, reflexology, Reiki. Um, no, um, if, I, if I didn't mention anything holistic related, I apologize. Uh, I, I hope I did. <laughs> if, if you guys in my life are watching, remind me if I missed anybody. Um, so, and of course, functional medicine, I, I really, I'm really passionate about this practice. I've seen so many cases improve and it was amazing, like no surprise, but it was just so great to be, to be there for these clients. Uh, lymphatic detoxif detoxification is very important. I do have that in my office using LET, lymphatic enhancement technology. I do believe that this time of the year is more than ever when we move less, when there's less lymphatic movement, it's really important to do at least maybe once a month. And Pure Bioenergy Method is available in our practice here. Um, uh, Russell uh, has level two certification, which allows him to practice on distance. 
not just in person. So this is a really great way to, if you're totally into holistic um, medicine and don't even do, don't, don't even want to do nutraceuticals, like I offer, for example, uh, in functional medicine, uh, you, you want to go for something like pure by energy, what Russell does. Um, so decreasing inflammation. Let's go over that. Um, for adrenal support, why is this important and why do we talk about adrenal support as the first thing? Um, we want to support the adrenal glands because without that um, strength, without that base of uh, hormones being put out, uh, we can't continue to the next step of healing. It's like building a, a building. You want to place the ground there that's solid, uh, and then you could build up on it. That's the case here. Very, very important to, to support the adrenals, to make sure that in the beginning, it's supplementing just to remind the glands that they have to be producing this much of the hormone, the HEA, pregnenolone, cortisol. All these are very important for general anti-inflammatory effect cannot make a next step without balancing those. And of course, balancing hormones will be depending on that as well. So if you, for example, having um, issues with your period, PMS, or uh, issues of like menopause and you are really symptomatic, some, some women in menopause, uh, they don't feel anything. They, they feel great. They go graciously, gracefully through the process and they just stop having period and others are sweating and uncomfortable losing sleep what makes a difference we're back to adrenal hormones back to digestive health if those are balanced no symptoms uh, are there i remember myself having terrible pms terrible stomach cramps before each period until my adrenals and my um, hormones were balanced with bioidentical um, hormones and, and everyone that's now that there's a big craze now with um, going off the pill for some it's a really truly smart thing to do uh, and uh, that the adrenal support and natural hormone balancing would be super important to do uh, when, when you get off the pill if you're one of those people and the functional testing um, with the hormone imbalances could be uh, done with the saliva testing. That's how we measure cortisol and DHEA, pregnenolone. Uh, there's also urine testing for labs like Dutch, for example. Uh, that, that kind of testing would be a little more explorative and a little more extensive because we are now going to look at the metabolites. And some of these metabolites will even be looking for toxicity, for, uh, for pathways, hormonal pathways are very important to, to take a full picture because sometimes we're limited with the saliva testing and adrenals. Um, there are other diagnostics. I absolutely stress out the importance of doing PCR testing you know, for stool, uh, especially if, if you came with digestive symptoms. Again, you, you come to my office and most of the time, I will still recommend PCR uh, test tool testing. Even if you say you don't have digestive symptoms, even if it's something else, I will try to see how it's related and rule out anything digestive related. But uh, for people that do come in already with digestive uh, issues, they will definitely be getting that test uh, diagnostic. And it could, it could find the, these things that no other, no other practitioner will really be looking for. That's, that's really important to be looking for parasites, bacteria, autoimmune triggers, gluten markers, gut inflammation markers. That's something that many doctors don't look for. Uh, SIG IgA, for example, marker, that's our immunity marker. Very important to to take a look if your immunity is down. Why, why is that? What's happening? What's causing it? 
uh, why don't you have enough soldiers to be fighting bacteria or other triggers uh, or maybe you're post the, that that the war already inside of your gut maybe your immunoglobulins were fighting so hard already and you're left with very little of those soldiers that's why your SIG IgA will be low so all these super important markers need to be looked at candida overgrowth. Um, that's something that's uh, still uh, kind of sort of uh, overlooked in traditional medicine. The, uh, I, I remember a lot of doctors said everyone, everyone has candida, so we, we can't even, like, there's no point. A, a really important uh, it really, really important to get rid of candida if you have a severe overgrowth. That means that uh, if you do have candida overgrowth that's affecting your system already systemically, uh, that, that's when I mentioned that toenail fungus and, and other things, skin, dandruff, uh, all these things that originated in the gut is now uh, showing up in other parts of the body. Candida uh, is also a really potential for even uh, tumor growth uh, if, if you're overgrown candidates just feeds on to other um, really unfavorable pathogens that will be responsible for cell proliferation, proliferation which is like a cell growth. Uh, enzymatic activity markers, we will look at uh, those for sure in the PCR stool testing. How, how much are you producing of the enzymes to be able to digest. So if you're not digesting, if you're not um, getting all these nutrients out of the food into your system, you could buy the most expensive food, the, most, the best organic food you can get. Um, you, could grab, you could spend enormous amount of money, but a lot of it will not be absorbed uh, until you fix your gut and you make sure that you are producing enough enzymes, or at least in the beginning, get a little help until your body resets, until your body starts making them on their own. I mean, unless there's some kind of pancreatic disorder, which is possible, but that's still a really small percent of people, most do recuperate fine. Uh, we will also look at fat malabsorption markers other great markers to get to the root cause of the problem. And again, it's all about getting to the root cause. No one's uh, paying as much attention to the diagnosis as much as getting to the root cause. Uh, we also uh, look at other tests that are, that are important. Again, depending on each case individually, that's why I prefer, my preferred method to work with clients is one-on-one. -on -one each one individual, everyone has a different case. Um, I know a lot of uh, practitioners now are offering group, which, which will be um, beneficial in the beginning, especially if you're only doing functional nutrition. Uh, yes, it's something to definitely consider, but if, you're, if you truly want to get um, individual um, results and, and approach to your situation, it has to be looked at in a different way. And uh, tests like oat organic acid testing is indispensable in many cases. Uh, even like I mentioned just now, candida overgrowth sometimes, stool, uh, blood, and uh, even the best technology, like PCR technology with stool testing, uh, will, will miss having a candida overgrowth Unfortunately, we didn't get perfect with those testing yet, but the oat will pick it up, organic acid testing, and that's really important to fix. It will take care of many, many uh, issues uh, that will become into silent chronic inflammation later, and you want to make sure that it does not happen, especially if it's someone younger then you definitely want to, um, to rule out any kind of candida overgrowth. There was someone younger that's all of a sudden just got, got sick without, and this, like the doctors can diagnose, it's a, it's a case where um, it's, everything's confusing. Uh, that kind of test would be recommended. Eventually, I think traditional medicine will catch up with that, hopefully. 
neurotransmitter testing would be the next one to consider. Again, like I said, most of the neurotransmitters are made in the gut. Um, and uh, if you're out of balance, if you're not going to the bathroom, like we discussed, uh, if you are true toxic, you're just not producing uh, enough of those neurotransmitters. You, you cannot manufacture enough of them, and therefore you, you cannot be happy. You, you really, your mood changes tremendously. You don't even have motivation because the dopamine now is affected. And a lot of, a lot of neurotransmitters are affected just because there's a digestive issue. Metal testing is important. There's urine metal testing, hair, uh, heavy metals are associated with severe toxicity. Um, and and when, when everything else looks good or at least been taken care of and patient is still not doing well, something like a metal testing is really, really great to, to check out, um, really to rule out having a heavy metal. I've, I've seen that, I've seen that on a couple of clients with quite a few clients actually with Crohn's disease where um, they had metal amalgams. Uh, over, over the years, they were progressively getting worse. I, I've even seen um, toxicity in women with breast implants. Uh, that's already back to O testing, organic acid testing. And uh, th those even considered uh, to be removed just to take care of the severe toxicity in the system. Well, the next test uh, I'm going to quickly mention, the next two is a SIBO testing. It's losing its popularity right now because of the complexity and how difficult it is to do. It's kind of you're collecting your, your own like a breath into, a, into the glass um, containers. It, it's more complicated to do. It is important to do in certain cases. It's still not completely ruled out. Some cases do need SIBO testing done just to see the full picture, but um, you could get sometimes the picture just from, from, from a good stool testing that's PCR-based, and the oat that 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 can give you a more clear uh, overall picture and the last test to mention today would be food sensitivity testing again that is not something i start i would consider start testing right away although some practitioners their program based on that and again that would be a different program already the reason I don't start food sensitivity tests right away is because of the leakiness of the gut or, or gut permeability, whatever term you want to choose to, to name it. It's, it's pretty much um, having the lining of the gut being thinned out to the point where particles of the food enter now the abdominal cavity and it goes back and forth. There, and, and the food is now... Uh, being uh, associated with the foreign object and the body is kind of reacting to the food particles and especially to food particles of that food that you keep on eating on a daily basis. So if you, for example, eat an egg and spinach that morning of the test or the, the day before, or that's your breakfast every morning, you could see the result of the test uh, showing you are allergic to egg and you are allergic to spinach. So um, again, healing the leakiness of the gut would be primarily the goal in my program before you uh, test, unless you don't mind spending the money and see the picture before and after. So that's also a possibility. All depends again on, on what you want to invest in. That, that, that would be um, up to you. So how functional nutrition works for digestive problems. Uh, I do recommend to start with whole foods, vegetables, proteins. Um, if you, ideally, I don't like to mix proteins in the same uh, sitting. So if you're having your protein, have it with vegetables. If you, if you again, Food also, there's pharm pharmacogenomics, there's nutrigenomics. There's a lot of now new science 
suggesting that certain foods are better for certain people of certain descent, like the the Asian people that uh, do so much better with rice and soy, people of um, European descent, for example, don't do as well. And and that's that's fine. That kind of, that makes sense, right? That's where originally they uh, their genetics they they come from. Uh, and and we we should really consider that. We should consider for each case and look into that. So if you are choosing your meals to be uh, to, to have one protein, which is ideally the case, you want to add uh, your vegetables with the protein, or you're going to have the rice with vegetables. You don't want to really mix and make your anti-inflammatory diet, especially in the beginning. When you're really addressing inflammation, you don't want to have a lot of starchy plus the protein plus the vegetable. You want to ease up your, on your stomach and you want to do rice separately with veggies or the protein separately with veggies because the rice protein is also tough to digest. And that's, that's in the cases of, of really heavy duty inflammation where you need to really cool it down. Uh, drinking lots of water is also important. Minerals in your water or, or adding mil minerals if you have filters that deplete the water of minerals. Eating fruits and berries. You, uh, you want to combine plant-based foods. You want to, uh, if, if you're severely inflamed, you want to have limited amount of meat-based uh, proteins in the beginning, especially, and add more of the plant-based choices. Considering elimination diet, that's something that um, I work with my clients. Uh, and in the beginning, we go over each anti-inflammatory food and each inflammatory food and then um, putting back the foods later if, if, if the inflammation permits or if, if the situation permits. It's it very individual. Uh, and uh, I do want to touch on effective stress reduction methods. Uh, I, I, I can't stop talking about this enough. I, I think it's uh, super important to pick one or two or three methods into any healing therapy, whether you're doing fully untraditional, whether you are a true believer of a holistic, you still want to work with your mind, with your subconscious, with your beliefs, because if you don't believe something will, will work for you, don't go for it. It, will, it won't work for you. Um, I uh, recommend my clients to go for whether hypnotherapy, which is amazing, big believer. EFT is a great option, uh, emotional freedom technique or tapping. Uh, that's what it's called. It's a great way to clear out that subconscious as well, those beliefs. Meditation is great. If you just starting and trying out meditation, it's okay not to completely um, go into that state where yeah, like nothing enters your mind. Most people can't. It's okay to feel this way. Even if it's a few seconds and you, come in, you keep on coming back to that state to have meditation, it's still much better than not doing it at all. Deep breathing, I recommend highly. If you want to look up um, online Bottega's method, it's a really great way of, of um, getting your oxygenation right, your pH in the system right. Uh, really, really good uh, way to, um, to heal. Psychotherapy, the groups, um, support groups, all these are great. Learning to say no is huge, especially for women naturally taking care of the families and taking care of um, loved ones and ourselves last. Uh, that's never good for anyone, not for you and not for your kids because they, they will depend on you later and if, you, if you're ill, it's not the way to live. Uh, learning to say no is another kind of stress reduction method that uh, can be discounted. Sleep. Uh, for many, it's such a problem that I, I, I just, I couldn't not talk about it today. Uh, people go to sleep 
super late, one o'clock and think it's that, that's fine, right? I get my few hours of sleep. Uh, they look at their screen. They, um, their REM sleep is completely interrupted. They never get to the point of uh, fully being relaxed and rested, um, which, is, which will never let their digestive system rest enough to heal. So that's very important. And um, digestive system and immune system both need support. And things like anti-inflammatory diet must be incorporated. Fermented foods, elimination diet that I men mentioned, something to try. Intermittent fasting is uh, great if you have no insulin resistance. That is something that um, you might know, for example, if you skip a meal and you're feeling shaky and you're feeling super hungry to the point where you wanna, you're gonna faint, you probably one of those with um, blood sugar imbalance and intermittent fasting is not for you. Cleansing oil supplements, castor oil packs are great. Animal protein decreased just to calm down the inflammation. Moving, moving is important. Even if you're fatigued, even if you're very, very tired, you need to move to keep that lymphatic flow and cleanse and cleanse and cleanse inside. Uh, and lymphatic detox will help also. Or, or you could even go to sauna, which is also going to help you cleanse. Uh, for the Digestive Reset, the program um, that I work with my clients, uh, that's something that I worked on for close to a decade. Uh, it's all about right steps. It's all about placing great nutrition back in after the healing process starts. Colorful plates. The more you put different colors on your plates in, in the ways of vegetables mostly, of course, the more nutrition you're going to get. Rotating foods, not being stuck on the same food uh, for um, for, for, for your continuous day in and day out. Important because this way you'll decrease the chance of having food intolerance. Having a lot of plant-based proteins, beans, natural prebiotics, uh, lots of greens, bone broth is very important, collagen for digestive healing is very important. And healthful oils are great to cook with uh, something like Coconut avocado, olive oil is great with salads and so forth. So the, as far as our gut microbiome, we know that there's something we used to consider pathogen, something that we now, we now know that are good bacteria. We need to have a good balance. We need to have a, a certain way of addressing. We get rid of the bad stuff. We replace with the good stuff as far as the probiotics. We repair with something like L-glutamine, the, the leakiness of the gut, and we repopulate. Finding the right probiotic is tricky still. There are a lot of practitioners that wrote papers on that, including myself. And uh, it's still a super individual pro process, but it's fun to, to be able to see the result when you see a final stool test that looks almost up like a perfection, which is great. Um, the hormones I mentioned, uh, I know I talked, I covered a lot today, so I'm going to get to the tips. I think that's what a lot of people are waiting for today, tips for the holidays. So tip number one, I'm, I have 10 quick tips. Uh, eat your breakfast and lunch before you go for a big dinner. That's, that sounds simple, sounds like, okay, what is she saying? It, if you skip the meals, if you go for that big dinner, you are going to grab so much food. You don't have enough enzymes to digest that food and you'll regret it later. So make sure even if you woke up late on Thanksgiving, um, still grab something, maybe um, snack size of a meal but definitely snack, a breakfast and lunch before you go to big dinner. Tip number two, uh, you want to go eat slowly. That's something that's very important for enzyme production, for, uh, for acid pumping, uh, and you want to, to, to wait at least 20 seconds 
uh, before, hold on one second. Uh, okay, so tw 20 minutes, sorry. You wanna wait at least 20 minutes before you start thinking of things like dessert. You wanna give the 20 minutes to be able to feel full. Uh, it often takes that that much for that for our brain to realize that that you're really truly full, especially when you have all this food on the table. Very important to to stop, give 20 minutes. If you still think you're hungry, if you still think you can handle more, then you would consider adding a, a little bit, like a few pieces of gluten-free and dairy-free dessert. Uh, indulge wisely. And when I say um, wisely, I, I, I know that it, it becomes really hard when you go out or go uh, to someone else's house for dinner. Uh, but you could think of it like this. Um, you're finished with, with your meal and hopefully was some vegetables and some turkey and maybe a little bit of um, sweet potato. Uh, and you're, you're, there's tons of dessert on the table and you're gonna say, you know what? I'm going to enjoy myself a, a, a nice piece of chocolate afterwards. I'm not gonna deprive because once you deprive yourself, you're, you're, you're bound to cheat later with, with your desserts. So I'm gonna have a little piece of chocolate, but uh, yeah, it, it's gonna be that much easier to say no to other uh, desserts. Uh, <laughs> Number four, do not eat to please others. Learning to say no, something I mentioned earlier. Um, yes, at, at big tables, Christmas dinners and uh, Hanukkah dinners and, and Thanksgiving, uh, we, we see relatives and a lot of people just think feeding is a way of showing love. And uh, you need to understand that uh, learning to say no here saves your tummy. And uh, you, 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 you could be a very sweet, simply rejecting. And if someone doesn't understand, you could start talking about something else. You could distract, you could change the conversation, you could do something uh, to, to somehow derail this from becoming an issue. Uh, but yes, it's, it's about loving yourself and not pleasing others. Tip number five is to keep alcoholic drink, drinks to a minimum. Uh, if you're in acute gut, uh, gut problem uh, and you have inflammation, you probably want to skip alcohol, period. But if you're doing okay and, and you're looking into, like really looking forward, to drinking, you're feeling absolutely fine. Uh, make sure that you don't go for more than one. And uh, ideally, for most people, the best option is a glass of red wine. Again, that, that ideally for those that are in acute situations should be avoided. High tip number six would be drinking uh, high quality water and uh, drinking it in large, um, large portions so you don't want to skip you don't want to sip in neither you just want to drink nice big portions to fully get hydrated and then get to the ne next point when when you need to drink again because if you're drinking in sips and small amounts you are just keeping your body dehydrated the entire time you never fully kind of replenish the box Tip number seven is uh, <laughs> if you're at the party and, and the food is served and it's like a derves kind of situation, um, choose to, to have a conversation, choose to talk to, to people, choose to, um, to do something fun versus staying at the full table because you're just going to be bound to grab, grabbing something at that table uh, something that you might not even need or uh, could really even harm you. Mindless eating is, is a big problem with many people. Tip number eight, uh, consider changing your whole holiday eating mindset. You could talk to the family before. You can discuss that you are now um, doing a healing program for yourself and you are tr truly, it's so important to you and your family. Most 
understand. If they don't, then you will be just um, telling them how you want their help. Sometimes people respond this way much better. Like you're, you're engaging them, the, those family members that not understanding right away, you're engaging them into um, uh, becoming your partner, becoming your, your um, helper, and most will be more open to, to now not push you to eat something you don't want, you don't need that or can't, they, they will be there for you. Tip number nine, serve yourself. That always works out. <laughs> if you ask someone to serve you and then that, that large amount of mashed potatoes with lots of butter in there is on, on, your, ta on your plate and right next to you and it tastes really good, uh, you might just finish it. So that's really important to do. Consider serving yourself. Number 10, the last tip, tip for the holidays would be faking your sensation of fullness. So again, like we talked a little bit earlier, 20 minutes is when you eat a portion of meal before you continue eating. So here, what you want to start with is the green salads or some kind of raw greens, some kind of vegetables, roughage to make you feel fuller this way plus the green salad and, and raw greens will help you with enzymatic production so that will al always be an improvement to your digestive process packing packing for uh, your holidays if you're already having some kind of gut problem you want to consider uh, packing enzymes and milk thistle with you. Things like apple cider vinegar before meal also helps. So if, you, if you're currently using liver GI support, you want to pack an extra pill or two before dinner. If you are, um, cons if you're knowing, knowingly taking gluten and you gluten intolerant to a moderate degree or mild degree, uh, you could grab something like zygluten that helps with breaking down the protein before it even hits the system. So it will decrease the chances of inflammation. You want to add on an extra magnesium citrate on the days where you overeat or eat more than your usual days. This way you'll be able to um, detoxify better. Uh, adrenal support is always great, especially if you are indulging and drinking. And if you are drinking, you want to take an extra dose of milk thistle and herbal sleep aid. If you're traveling abroad, if you're traveling uh, by a plane and you have a jet lag, you could grab some 5-HTP or Fannybot to help you with your sleep just so you, uh, the, the, this will be uh, better for your adrenals. You will get rest and then you'll have this, the energy the next day. So just to finish up our tips and to finish up our talk, I know I talked a lot. I do want you to just think about and imagine, can you imagine feeling, finally feeling better, feeling more energy, more time with the loved ones and just less digestive symptoms or no digestive symptoms. Just, just think about how it would improve your life, especially if your symptoms are really bad like mine were with Crohn's and colitis, that's, that's a terrible, terrible condition to have. Um, the program I developed took years, a lot of knowledge, experience, and love. And it is, believe it or not, possible to reset your digestion. It's possible to feel, feel well with chronic digestive problems. Um, if you're thinking that, uh, you know, the program I, I worked with, with my clients, if it's going to work for me, or what if I won't be able to follow you know, stuff is too hard to do. <laughs> or um, what if you're thinking um, that I'll wait for something else that will definitely work. Um, if, you, if you're considering uh, that, that you are done with having symptoms and you want to feel better, you, you want to hear about the 10-week plan that I have for my clients. I do talk about addressing their condition. Uh, I, there's a stepwise approach. I uh, hold you by the hand, there's an anti-inflammatory diet, there's functional diagnostics. And if you want to stop feeling like digestive 
disorder victim and want to retrain yourself and, and teach your family and get your life back, uh, I think my program is excellent. It's at least 1,500 of hours of self-learning, uh, me presenting it uh, to you. So um, it, it could be a, a very different way, an easier way to heal. There's a, a lot of support with my program. You, I, I will lead you through the, again, it's one-on-one, -on -one, and then there's support. I will lead you through each step. And uh, my offer, if you are interested, you could email me at ina at digestereset.com. I think I misspelled it on the slide. Yep. It's ina at digestereset.com. You, if you're watching on Facebook, you could direct message me or PM me. Uh, you, uh, I, will, I will reply and I will, I will tell you a little more about the program. Uh, you, if you also want to get a free copy of my book, you could just put in cronesandcolitisfix.com. You could grab the free book from there. Uh, or you could give us a call at the office, 732-414-6223. And again, if you're going to have questions, don't hesitate. Uh, you know how to contact me now. And the slides are going to be available to the only those that registered for webinar. You could still register at Eventbrite if you want, guys, from the Facebook. Uh, but uh, those that are watching, I thank you. Thank you for learning. I hope I presented a lot of information that will be useful and helpful to you. And if you want to spread um, this information and share, I, I'd love that. You know, that the information doesn't belong. To us, it, it belongs to, to you guys. Please uh, share my contact. And if someone is interested in truly healing, in, in um, taking care of their digestion, get their energy back, my 10-week program is absolutely for them. Um, I thank you for watching. And I hope everyone enjoys their night, their holidays, and, and follows my tips. <laughs> Take care.